Hello, and welcome to my Grasshopper tutorial. I am Luke McDonald. I'm a part of Shelby's 401 Studio, and I am going to show you how to make a Gabion wall in Rhino. Um, I want to first talk about some of the ways that I went through doing this in the first place. So I first use largely Kangaroo Grasshopper. Um, Kangaroo, Kangaroo and Grasshopper allows you to use what's called a bouncy solver, which allows you to create spheres and create point collisions that then are attached to those spheres. A couple of the problems that arose with that was it only recognizes the point as the collision for the most part. So it doesn't really allow you to input different geometries to get any of the effects that we really wanted to. Um, the program that we did research and find that you can do that is using 3ds max it, you're able to actually use gravity as a built-in plugin because 3ds max is built more for animations grasshopper does not really have that capability um, we did also use kangaroo as when we were earlier on in the semester looking at tensile structures we had experimented quite a lot with that um, so kangaroo is quite an intuitive program and was easy to use and easy to test out, but it just wasn't the best way to go about doing the grasshopper for this. So what I ended up learning though in the process of all that was I ended up having to populate rocks. So on the left you can see what happens here, but I'll show you what this all looks like before. So the structure layer. So this is what it it looks like in rendered and the point of doing this for us was to be able to get different light studies. We wanted to be able to test out what a Gabion wall effect would have. So here you can see what that south, what south light or sorry, east light would look like coming into our space. Um, we had glass in there that we were using to test some of that, but Overall, this is what the outcome looks like straight out of the bake. Um, you have the different rocks and then you also have the screen here. So we even were able to build the individual cages, which you can tell because we piped them at different geometries, allowing them to have that kind of geometric square look to them, having the larger volumes with the smaller grids placed inside of it. But before all of that, you end up with the grasshopper blocks, um, is what I've called them. This is what I inputted into the two, or the breadth geometry for actually creating the rocks, as well as then the surfaces for making the wires. Here I used a couple of different, or the main script that I used was through the populate geometry. So here you can see that one that I grabbed. So I have to make it, because our my radius is six inches, you have to make it six inches smaller than the size that you wanted to do. This was really easy just using scale 1D, and then this shows you the outside perimeters of that. Um, when you populate it, you get a series of points. Those series of points then are later become the origin point for these spheres. What you're able to do with the populate geometry tool is you're able to change the number of them. You're able to then change the seed of them too, which just allows to create different random patterns if you were to say multiply this over a series of times. If you're only doing one though, this really doesn't matter all that much. Um, I found 500 to 600 to be a reasonable number for doing the light studies. The one that I showed you earlier has 600 um, and had less openings than obviously if you were have less and less sunlight. Then when you go ahead and take those points, you collect them into a series here and you input that into 
the base. So that takes the center points as a list. And then you attach radiuses and a U count. So the U count is kind of important because what the U count does is it allows us to change the smoothness of the surface. I found that since I wanted to create the texture of rocks, going down to four gave me the best effect that had still a little bit of geometric ruggedness to it. Um, and I found again that the radius six was the best. Um, that is our final output for that. Then going over here, we used these surfaces to highlight them and to make the grids. And then they get piped. So I made small and large ones, which allowed me to pipe them at different thicknesses, allowing me to have that um, grid look that I talked about earlier. Um, I repeated that the same for the sides and the horizontal planes. What that allows me to do is then, once I've created my dimensions here with the larger ones, I can take those numbers, the U and V, and I can slide them down because the V value will be the same on the side and the U value will be the same on the bottom and top. That allows me to get my wires to appear to line up to create a box. Then to populate this whole thing, I found it easy to create a system tree that allows me to move all of them at the set interval and move them up and down. And for these, because they're on the inside, I don't have to, I didn't bother creating the large ones because they don't make that much of a difference when viewing it from the inside. So there's the system that we have for how the rocks will be placed. And I have one in the back up here. With everything on, this is what we get. We get a series of populated points, then we get spheres that are attached to it, and we get a cage that's built around that entire system. And we have the wires and the rocks on separate layers. And you get quite a nice effect that allows for good light studies. It's also a small enough model size, so it doesn't bog down anything when you're running renderings or your computer all that much. And it was quite easy to adjust. I've had to adjust it a couple times already and given the grasshopper scripts it takes just a little bit of um, simple calculations to do that. There would be ways to do that in grasshopper but it didn't seem worth it for the amount of times and easeability of changing it. So hopefully this will help anyone if they need to create any sort of gabion wall that might be useful in any of their landscaping or some sort of similar effect that they can take away from this. Thank you for watching.